good morning dear students we are starting a new topic today a small topic biofeedback as the name itself implies here it the bio means living so we are giving a feedback to a living being for a human we take the, uh, the biological changes or the measures such as uh, cardiac pulse rate breathing rate you know a, a, a brain waves such as the electroencephalogram waves such activities physiological responses are given as feedback to the patient themselves so they so that they can we can alert them and we can correct them wherever it is required so biofeedback therapy is a technique that trains people to improve their health by controlling certain bodily processes that normally happen involuntarily such as heart rate blood pressure muscle tension skin temperature so here electrodes or sensors are placed on focal points whichever area we are going to record in the parts of the body to measure heart rate blood pressure muscle contraction temperature brain waves such as the whatever we want to measure so a monitor is used to display the results a physiotherapist will describe a situation and guide the patient through task oriented or relaxation technique the aim of the technique may be to teach a particular task or to make a uh, you know a posture correction or to relax a particular muscle or relax a particular part of the body so that has to be achieved by a physiotherapist so proper guidance has to be given to the patient and describe about the whole procedure so that the patient is comfortable the monitor lets patients see their heart rate and blood pressure change in response to being stressed or remaining relaxed initially patient will use the monitor to see their progress but eventually they will be able to achieve success without the use of a monitor or electrode so you have to understand that these devices mostly are in they used in the clinic but nowadays in modern times we have lot of smart watches which can also help you uh, throughout the uh, day time also or even the night time also so uh, in a clinical setup the aim is to teach the patient you know the biofeedback method whatever the desired aim is and after that the patient can independently do those techniques without the use of any uh, electrodes or sensors so biofeedback technology was introduced in the late 1960s for therapy in stroke rehabilitation this technique allows subjects to gain conscious control over a voluntary but latent neuro function by alerting them so by alerting the patient using auditory or a visual cue so we make them how to control voluntary activity because sometimes some patients may have involuntary activities so prevent the prevention of the involuntary movements and you know relaxation of a particular area especially in the post stroke rehabilitation uh, techniques so here that the efforts have activated a targeted neuromuscular pathway so a nor good learning process has to be uh, is our aim difficulty in correctly identifying the area of the brain damage see some of the shortcomings which i am going to tell you difficulty in correctly identifying the area of the brain damage the long rehabilitation periods problems in recruiting adequate number of patients and controversy over timing and duration of interventions see above given factors one is a difficulty in identifying the area of brain damage long duration of rehabilitation period uh, recruiting adequate adequate number of patients controversy over timing or duration all this have hindered the conduct of high quality studies research uh, uh, research research is not done much in the area of stroke rehabilitation so we don't have much evidence to support the use of biofeedback in uh, uh, stroke rehabilitation but even then uh, because we don't have we uh, yet because of high burden of suffering the lack of established therapeutic alternative we don't have much 
uh, established therapeutic alternative to biofeedback in this area so we have to keep on using biofeedback as a best scientific method at present available to you know for these kind of relaxation as well as you know alerting the patient using uh, to use and control the motor control the involuntary movements so what are the types of biofeedback technique available now several biofeedback techniques may be used to gather information about an individual's bodily responses the one used may depend on individual health conditions and objectives and is determined by a biofeedback practitioner machines and techniques may include electroencephalogram that is eeg an eeg monitor the monitors the activity of brain waves linked to different mental states such as wakefulness relaxation calmness light sleep or deep sleep which we call as rapid eye movement sleep or non rapid eye movement sleep this process is also known as neurofeedback when you are using electroencephalogram it actually records the activity electrical activity of the brain and it is recording it as a waves usually what waves we get is gamma uh, you know the uh, alpha beta waves you are getting gamma waves are only seen in uh, you know people who meditate so these kind of uh, understanding and this can we can understand more about the activity of a person's brain and this sometimes can be given as a neuro uh, feedback for a patient himself next is electromyogram an uh, emg the electromyogram uses electrode or other type of sensors to measure, measure the muscular contraction or muscle tension the emg makes a patient aware of muscle tension allowing him or her to recognize the feeling early on to try to control the tension right away an emg may be used to treat some illness in which the symptoms tend to worsen under stress emg biofeedback or angle positional biofeedback sometimes foot positional biofeedback and even upper limb hand functional biofeedback can be combined with emg biofeedback so positional biofeedback means the position uh, the it senses the position such as a range of motion so, uh, so those kind of uh, feedback uh, tech, uh, equipments can be combined with muscular contraction that is emg so they can give you a good the patient a good uh, feedback regarding the uh, range of motion position and also the uh, amount of contraction other techniques are galvanic skin response technique galvanic response technique is used for measuring sweat sweat gland so so sweat indicates the presence of anxiety so whenever there is autonomic dysfunction most of the conditions where the uh, such as phobia anxiety and stuttering uh, people may start sweating some people start uh, the palm of the hand starts sweating so these kind of anxiety related uh, skin response can be measured and can be alerted to the patient using and uh, galvanic skin response training temperature biofeedback sensors attached to the fingers or feet measure skin temperature because body temperature often drops when under stress a low reading of the, that means low reading of temperature can prompt a person to begin relaxation techniques temperature biofeedback may help treat certain circulatory disorders such as renaud's disease or the reduce the frequency of migraines breathing during respiratory biofeedback bands are placed around your abdomen just to monitor your breathing patterns and respiratory rate pulse rate can also be measured using a, a activity to uh, measure the activity of the heart and to give a feedback accordingly to the patient several different relaxation exercises are used in biofeedback therapy including deep breathing progressive muscle relaxation that is alternately tightening and then relaxing muscles or a group of muscle individual muscle or a group of muscles guided imagery concentrating on an image guided imagery where you already we have studied the mental imagery so here we guide the therapist will guide a particular uh, area or you know artificial environment and uh, uh, such as a color and texture for example uh, you know of a orange you know color and texture of orange to focus a person's mind and to make them feel more relaxed so guided imagery is also a biofeedback bio technique 
mindfulness meditation focusing on one's own thought so the biofeedback equipment will give uh, you know cues to the patient to uh, stay still and to relax and to control the breathing uh, pattern so this will help them to meditate longer and also to uh, relax more more better so what are the biofeedback devices you can be used interactive computer programs or mobile devices some types of biofeedback devices measures physiological changes in your body the body such as your heart rate activity and skin changes by by using one or more sensors attached to the fingers or to your ear the sensors plug into computer so the sensor whatever has to, it has to record whatever physiological function it can be a heart rate activity that is pulse rate uh, sweating from the skin or the temperature from the skin or the position uh, from the joints or uh, fingers or the uh, uh, you know range of motion whatever it is sensing and the sensor will record it and this will be sent to the computer or the smartphone or the mobile device so we nowadays wearable devices such as watches bands you know um, like uh, you know caps a lot of wearable devices or helmets all are available to uh, which involve sensors uh, such as uh, for breathing uh, the waist monitor can be used like a like a corset you can wear that and the download downloadable app app the app can you know through your mobile phone it can be connected to the through wi-fi it can be connected to the mobile and then this uh, alert can be given to the patients uh, through a mobile or through a headphone in you know, as a auditory cue or this in the screen of the mobile using a visual cue so all this uh, latest devices every day we are getting new and new devices which is very much useful so what are the benefits of biofeedback therapy chronic pain temporomandibular joint disorders fibromyalgia all these cases where chronic pain are patients of all age group from children to older adults here this technique will reduce it is not only directly reducing pain actually pain may induce muscle spasm so here the biofeedback technique can uh, uh, increase the you know increase the muscle relaxation thereby redu reducing the chronic pain and also can give alert to for proper number of uh, strengthening exercises uh, in a contraction all those alert can be given so that strengthening of the uh, muscles uh, will lead to reduction of pain so strengthening of the muscles and relaxation of the muscles can be alerted thereby reducing chronic pain headaches muscle tension and stress due to which triggers uh, migraine can be uh, controlled using biofeedback technique anxiety relief is one of the most common use of biofeedback technique gait correction you know uh, whatever the foot switches the sensors of pressure sensors foot switches all those activity floor you know on the floor in a lab can give biofeedback to the patient alert them if they are not placing their foot properly the parameters of the gait will go abnormal so this car this can be alerted it can be also using video cameras and showing the uh, different views of a person's gait which can be displayed to him in different angles which he can norm cannot normally see can be displayed in front of the patient while walking it can be also be used during treadmill walking training so gait uh, correction in various aspects using many methods video cameras foot switches pressure switches you know uh, even uh, you know uh, alerting by physical cue uh, you know auditory cue uh, and, and visual cues and hand function correction uh, normally hand function ability such as fine motor skill activities all those activities can be uh, corrected using biofeedback technique spasticity reduction and improvement of activities of daily living so activities of daily living can be highly improved using biofeedback technique and spasticity can be reduced by reducing the muscle tension relaxation technique posture and ergonomics are area where uh, biofeedback techniques are highly useful same in balance training also in gait and balance training